guys, so I'm back. Instagram as well as Facebook and any YouTubers that are on here. I had technical difficulties today while I was trying to do a Facebook and Instagram live. So embarrassed. What can you do? I keep saying that's showbiz for you, right? Okay, so we're going to start from the beginning just in case because I know uh, we kind of had to erase a lot of that. So we're going to start from the very beginning. Today, I am making for you something that's easy to do, quick. You don't have to worry about turning on your oven because in the weather we're having out here in Southern California, it's going to be hitting the 90s within the next day or two. So we're going to be using our good old microwave. Oops, it's a little dusty from the flour from earlier today. So this is round uh, three, actually, I believe. We're going to start with a coffee mug, a small one, just a one cup, eight ounce coffee mug. And we are going to make in here, <laughs> we're going to make a brownie cake. And guess what? It's gluten free. And guess what? Well, today we're not going to, but if you wanted to, you could also make it gluten free as well as vegan, plant based. How awesome is that? I'll let you know exactly what you would changes you would do. Very simple, very easy. So let's get going. So we're going to start off. I usually have a small sifter and I have one back at the kitchen, but since COVID-19 has been around, I've been slowly or I went back to the kitchen and grabbed as much of my stuff as possible. So I kind of turned the kitchen and the dining room into a whole bunch of mama cheesecake stuff. But I only grabbed a large sifter, not my small one. So bear with me. Uh, Rachel Mason, thank you very much for reminding me about parchment paper. The only reason why I haven't been is parchment paper is so difficult to get hold of right now. <sighs> kind of like toilet paper, right? Except I heard Costco had toilet paper. So if you need any, get over to Costco, people. All right, so we're going to start with our brownie cake. I love chocolate. So this is a very rich, delicious, decadent brownie cake. It's like a fudgy brownie and half cake as well. So we're going to do some cocoa. How much? Uh, we actually, thank you, Anna Marie. That's my camera person back there, my sister. One tablespoon of regular cocoa and one tablespoon of dark because I like some dark chocolate there. Yeah, I know what some of you were thinking. Okay, so I am going to sift this through because one thing for all of you to know is that when you work with cocoa, you always are going to get little chunks, like little rocks. It just takes a while. No matter how often you try to shake that, it just always happens. So using a sifter is the best way to keep from having little lumps of chocolate because, you know, cocoa, when you bite into it, it is definitely bitter, and you don't want that in your cake. So I'm going to put that in there. Set that off to the side. We'll clean out here. And put that there. Now, guess what? Because I'm using my parchment paper, I am going to actually just slide that right back into my cup. So I don't lose any of it. Now we are using actually, uh, let me look to make sure I have it right. One and a half tablespoons of gluten free flour. Now, if you're not gluten free and you can do gluten, use an all purpose flour, whichever one works best for you. This is a great one that I use. As soon as I find out where I can get more of, I will let you all know. But my second and third go to is actually King Arthur's all-purpose gluten-free flour and Bob's Red Mill. I probably shouldn't even mention their name. It's not like they're paying me for it, right? But I do use it, so I'm going to mention it. This flour is phenomenal. It is a super fine rice flour, and I just love it for baking. I can't wait to find it. How much? Uh, that was actually uh, one and a half tablespoons. And then I'm going to mix this together. And you just want to make sure you get it all mixed. Oh, and one more thing I was forgetting, and that is a pinch of salt. 
let me tell you, add salt. A lot of people always go, oh, but I don't want to. If you want to go light on your pinch, you can totally do that. But salt helps to bring out the flavor. If you really want to bring out the flavor in your brownie or chocolate cake, or in this case, brownie cake, add a pinch of espresso powder. Whoa, let me tell you, that takes it up another whole notch. So I don't want to go running out to the refrigerator, so I'm just going to stick with this. And see, good thing I kept that paper there. You want to just mix it until everything, all the dry ingredients are mixed together. And it looks like we hit it. I'm going to put that right back in again. So it's kind of strange to do this kind of a video because I don't have anyone asking questions. So Anna Marie is going to play the part of all of you. So if she thinks of something, she's going to yell it out and ask me a question, and I'll answer it for all of you. I'll try. Okay, see, she's going to try. So here's another trick. So you add to this, and I use dark chocolate, but hey, if you're into milk chocolate, you could totally use milk chocolate. Or if you have a favorite candy bar, use that. Again, love me some dark chocolate, so I'm going to use dark chocolate. And I took, instead of the chocolate chips that you could buy at the store, I like to cut up my own. So I've got nice sized chunks in here. So what you're going to do, and there is exactly, let me look really quick to make sure I give you the right amount, one and a half tablespoons of dark chocolate here. I am going to use half of it, and I'm going to save the other half. And I'm putting that in with my dry ingredients. Now, the reason why, do you want to know? Why? The reason why I throw that in with the dry ingredients, I'm going to throw a couple more pieces in there. Just a few. Because when you mix your chocolate chip, or if you were doing, uh, say, blueberries, in with your dry ingredients and get it all covered, dust it over, then when it bakes, it's going to bake throughout that bake instead of settling at the bottom. And that's what happens if you don't uh, get it dusted with your dry ingredients. So I'm going to put that in there. Good to know. Yeah, isn't it? Definitely. Oh, let me see. We almost forgot the sugar. So I'm going to add the sugar. And we've got two and a half tablespoons of sugar. And add that in because you got to have some sugar, right? you got to have that. got to have it a little sweet. Because remember, I did put in a total of two tablespoons of cocoa. And we need some sweetness in there to bring that together. And I use organic sugar, which is totally plant-based. And if you don't like using organic sugar and you'd rather use uh, alternative, you can also use like uh, monk fruit sugar. You could also use oh, coconut sugar would be really great in this also. And that would help keep you going in that direction of plant-based. All right, so now we've got that all in. It's time to add our wet ingredients. So we're going to add two tablespoons of milk. Guess what, people? You can add oat milk, almond milk, soy milk, rice milk, any other type of milk to help keep this plant-based. I'm going right into here, into my microwave. Let me grab my tablespoon over here. We're going to mix this up. This was something I had mentioned when I was doing the live earlier today before my computer crashed or my uh, Wi-Fi crashed. And so when you melt your butter, it always separates. And you'll notice, you'll see like almost like milk. And I remember, do you remember, Anne-Marie, you mentioned one time about why does it look white down there? That's, it starts with milk, you know, so we're going to mix that all together so it all incorporated. And it is two tablespoons to, put that right, doesn't that look delish? Now I'm going to go back to using, I'm going to put this right back in here to keep it warm because we're going to use it again. Because wait till you hear what the next bake is going to be. It's so exciting. All right. So now we're just mixing this all together. And I'm going to do it right over this parchment paper in case it spills. And you just want to make sure you get it all mixed. Make sure you get in the corners or the edges of the cup. Because there is nothing worse than biting into a piece of cake or brownie. And you get a chunk of cocoa powder that wasn't mixed in right. 
So we're going to mix that all in there together. And it looks like it's all in. Looks so yummy. Can we see? Yeah. Can Ooh. you see that? Yep. Doesn't it look yummy? Oh, guess what? We were forgetting something. We need to add just a little bit of vanilla. So let me shake this up. If you buy pure vanilla, down at the bottom, you'll all, let me tighten this, you'll see a ridge. I already shook mine up so you can't see it. So make sure you always shake it to get that goodness out of there. So I'm going to do a nice heaping of vanilla. I did how much? A quarter teaspoon. Got to remember, this is just a little mug cakey brownie. So I'm going to mix that in really well. And then I'm going to take the rest of that chocolate and just sprinkle it around the top. Okay, you guys have to look at this. Because it looks so good. Bring it look closer. It. Lower it. Ah. Can you see that? Mm, looks good. Okay. And I'm going to take some of that and I'm just going to kind of push it down into the batter. Because I want some on top, but I like it right inside. So this actually turns out to be really close, oopsie, to a uh, lava cake almost. Let me grab a piece of paper towel, clean my edge off here. Get that down in there. Okay. We are done mixing. I'm making a mess all over this, throw that over there. We are going to put this into the microwave, take out the butter, of course. And guess what, folks? 40, 40 seconds. Actually, I'm going to put it in for 50 seconds because the last bake that I did, it was just a tad under. So I'm going to go ahead and do 50 seconds, almost a full minute. And we're going to let that cook up. And let me tell you, it's delicious. And right now, here in Southern California, as I said, it's starting to warm up. We're supposed to hit in the 90s out here in Whittier a couple of times uh, this week. Is that right, anne -Marie? That's right. So, with that said, I thought this was a great way of using the microwave. Now, if anybody doesn't have a microwave, don't worry. Actually, you can put it right into the oven, uh, but you have to with make sure... Cup? Well, you have to make sure your mug is oven safe. If it's not oven safe, get a small dish. Um, what would be good is a ramekin, and you could put it in a ramekin and bake it in there. At, do it at 350, and probably about 25 minutes, 30 minutes, you're gonna have, a, have to check, because I actually didn't run the bake in the oven. All right, let's take a, oh, I can smell. Can you smell that? Oh my God, I wish there was smell-o-vision here. Oh, Ooh, that's luscious. perfect. Look at this. Ooh, oh, yummy. God. Smells so, so good. You know what? I see a little, but nope, I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to set it right here so it can get going, and I'm going to put this right back in because we're going to need it. So this has to cool off. What I'm going to do is add some whipped cream. Look at that. Mm. When it's all done. So that is a vanilla bean whipped cream. Ice cream would be Fabulous on that, don't you think so, Anna Marie? I think mm. so. A vanilla bean ice cream. That would taste so good. That might be our yeah, dessert tonight. Maybe. What do you think? Sounds good. I think mom would like that, right? Sounds yummy. Oh, look. There was a little piece of chocolate. I'm just going to throw it right there on top. And it could just kind of melt down in there. Here. We'll just take that and poke it down in there. There you go. Okay. So, let me clear this up. And we'll get ready to start our next one because this next one you are going to love. Guess what we're going to do? What? We are actually going to make a cinnamon roll in a mug. Can you believe that? A cinnamon roll in a mug. But we're going to do a little kitchen bake hack here. It was brought to my attention by two individuals, Carla and Acacia. Both of them, okay, that was Acacia Mora. And Carla, I'm going to mess up her name, uh, Tomas is her main name. We'll stay there. But they both said, you know what, do something for us that we have in our home. We may not have the same thing you do. So I said, okay. So I decided that the mugs that I'm going to use is 
a normal size mug. I think everybody has a mug. Like, well, maybe not exactly like this. This one says, <laughs> Suva Elementary Superstars are the best. Yay! <laughs> and why do we have this mug, Anna Marie? Yeah, we have two. And actually, we Yay. have a cover full. <laughs> Anna Marie was a teacher and she worked at Suva before she retired. So they gave her that every year for what was it? Teacher's Day. Teacher's Day. And we're going to also make a little baby one too. So I'm so excited. So we'll leave those right there and we're going to move over here and bring. This one is not gluten free. So I'm going to take my gluten free flour and just drop that over there. And we're going to start. So let me see. Before we get going, I like to make sure that we already have the what goes in the center, the filling of our cinnamon roll. Now, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. Oh, wait, did I ever say what the bake hack was? No. The bake hack is, you know, some people told me that they can't find flour in the markets. So, I thought, huh, what if we used pancake mix? So, we're using a pancake mix. So what I, that's the hack. So this right here flour is actually pancake mix. It's so exciting. And we're not going to have to worry about a rise. So this is super simple. So any of you out there who ever said, God, I wish, excuse me, I wish I could make a cinnamon roll, but I don't want to go through that hassle. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do one. All right. So to make that filling... We have in here one tablespoon, or excuse me, a quarter, <laughs> I'm looking at my list here, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh, that's actually, oh, I doubled it. So it's a half teaspoon of cinnamon because I doubled the recipe. And we've got two and a half tablespoons of light brown sugar, and we have one and a half tablespoon of organic sugar. So we're gonna just mix this all together. I added cinnamon to mine. If you look at a lot of recipes, most of them don't have it, but I think of Cinnabon, I don't know about you guys, and I like that. And I know they use cinnamon, so I decided I was putting cinnamon in mine. So I'm just kind of breaking up that brown sugar in here with the organic sugar. I tend to use organic sugar a lot, uh, could this be plant-based? Is that a question you might have? Absolutely. Same thing. Buy vegan butter and use a vegan or plant-based milk. And voila, you have a plant-based mug cinnamon roll. Okay. Again, this isn't a true one, but it works. And you can make this first thing in the morning and look like a star. All right. So we got that together. We're going to add to that two How much butter? We're going to add two tablespoons of butter. So you're going to take that melted butter and put that in there. One and two. And mix all that goodness. Just mix that in. Oh, you know what? I just realized I'm doubling this recipe. I should have added and other one, but I think this is fine. I should look to see what the original recipe called for. I'm looking just real quick, la la la. Oh no, I'm right, two tablespoons, that is doubled. All right, because I found that if I use just one tablespoon, it just wasn't enough. I like to have a filling in my cinnamon roll. All right, so I'm gonna put the butter back here to the side. We don't need that cocoa anymore. Move this over. And we're gonna just set this off to the side. We're gonna use that later. And I'll push that over here. And now we're gonna move over to our wet ingredients. Let me get my bowl. And to this bowl, we are going to add one egg. Guess what? <laughs> I forgot the egg. Uh-oh. Okay. Magic will happen here in a second. We have all sorts of stuff in the way. Hold on, people. I think I just cracked an egg. Ugh. 
Okay. Crack one egg into the bowl. Now, usually, if you've seen any of my videos, I always like to crack my eggs in a separate bowl, but since nothing else is in this bowl, right, uh, that's the reason why. Why? Did you see that? An eggshell fell in lower, there. Lower the bowl. Oh, now I see it. You see the eggshell? And actually, if you use your eggshell, it'll take it away. Voila. Eggshell gone. And that's the reason why I do it separately, because... If you do it separately, if you get an eggshell in there, you can take it out. All right, so to this, we're going to add our vanilla. One teaspoon. Oh, I already have that done. It's over here. One teaspoon of vanilla. I'm going to mix this around because, as I said, vanilla is a goodness, all natural. It'll settle at the bottom. So I'll add that in. Mmm. I love the smell of vanilla. So good. Okay, what else are we going to add? We're going to add the vanilla. We're going to add a tablespoon of organic sugar. Again, if you'd rather use coconut, feel free to use that. And then we're also going to add to this our whole milk. Two tablespoons of whole milk. Again, if you want to keep it plant-based, feel free to use whatever type of whole milk you like to use plant-based wise. Okay, I'm looking, my, there's my whisk. And then we're gonna just whisk this all together and make sure we incorporate everything. So it is, I forgot to say, happy Earth Day, everybody. Happy Earth Day. Happy we're Earth Day. Trying to hurry and finish up here so I could take you out to our container garden. I. When I lived up in Northern California, I was up there for three years, no, six years, for six years. And uh, while I was up there, I really got into gardening. So when I came down here, veg vegetables and fruits, and I used to can and do all sorts of cool things. And when I moved down here, there really wasn't much to do, so I decided to take up container gardening. So we've got mint, tomatoes, all sorts of stuff growing out there. Anyway, let's get back to this. All right, so that's all incorporated. So now into this, oops, we forgot the butter. Here it is. We're gonna add three and a half tablespoons of butter to this. Again, mix that up, and I think I just got butter on me. Okay, so one, two, three, and we're gonna do Eyeball? About, yeah, I did an eyeball on that one. I know I shouldn't, but I did it on that one. Shh. Okay. And let's get that incorporated in. So I'm just going to tilt a little bit to make sure I don't get more on me. Though, that's what the apron's for, right? Okay, so that's all nice and incorporated. So now, let me take a look and make sure I've got everything I do. So now's the fun part. We're going to take our pancake batter, because guess what? Pancake batter already has a leavening agent in there. So it's like a baking powder, baking soda, whatever you use when you do cinnamon rolls. I think for the most part it's baking powder. Um, or also, of course, you generally always use yeast. And I do have, I just picked some up the other day. Acacia, have you used your yeast yet? Uh, so I'll do something with my yeast. In the interim, I decided let's go with the pancake mix because again I want you to use things that you have at home so if you've got the pancake better use it not to mention we're talking like with well of course I'm chatting up too much but normally this would not take you so long to do let me put this off to the side here and now I'm just going to mix this and incorporate that flour as much as possible and just mix it around, get that in. And a lot of times you think, oh, it won't mix in anymore. It does. If you move that around back and forth, you're going to get all of that flour right into the wet portion of your dough. This is turning into the dough, which is going to be our cinnamon roll. Okay, I think we are done here. We got it all. Can you see that? Yes. All right. 
So now's the fun part. We're going to roll it. Put that off to the side. Do you put anything on yes, the counter? We, yes, I'm glad you said that. I happen to have my flour right here. So I've got all-purpose flour. I didn't want to use a pancake uh, flour because, you know, I might want to make some more cinnamon rolls. So I needed to save that. So I'm using all-purpose flour. And I'm just going to put that out there. We want that to roll out to about um, six by eight inches, or excuse me, eight by six inches. So we're gonna roll it, and this actually is about that. And then I'm just gonna move some of this over because I know I'm gonna be needing it. Ha ha, needing it, get it? Because I'm gonna need this right now. And I always like to dust my pen, my rolling pin. So now you take your dough and you drop it onto that floured surface now remember we don't have to worry about doing a rise that's what's so cool about this so you can get up early in the morning and you can make this for your partner you can make this for your kids you can make everyone go how the heck did she make that maybe you're gonna have the girls over you can make it for your sister <laughs> there you go make it for your sister <laughs> I mean, you will be a hero. So now we're just going to knead this dough a little bit. So it's kind of a fold and a push. And probably about five or six times is good. And then make sure you are keeping that bottom floured or else your dough is going to stick. One. Two. That's probably enough. I think I did more than six, right? Okay. So the cool thing is, as you keep rolling it around, you'll notice it just starts to go into a ball all on its own. That means it's ready and it's smooth. If you notice it, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a lot smoother than what it was. You see that? Mm-hmm. All right, so now I'm gonna get that flour on my surface again because now we're gonna roll it out and I wanna make sure it does not stick. But I don't want too much flour because I don't want it to dry out. So I'm gonna take that extra again and push it to the side. Put that down and I'm gonna Start by giving it a little rectangular. Can you see? I'm going to move that out of the way. Can you see it better, Henry? Yeah. Oop, there's my chocolate mess. Just ignore that. Now, I've got my ruler, and I am now going to roll that. Is that out. a special ruler? Well, it's a kitchen ruler. I'm glad you asked. So I like to keep one that's just for the kitchen. So this way, it's only in here. This one is for my regular gluten flour. But I have another one that I use, and it's metal, so I can wash it and then also sanitize it. And I have one for gluten-free as well. But this one is the one I'm going to use. So I'm just going to set that out there so I have a good idea. Now, when I did the test one, and I'm doing the same thing, I ended up rolling it out way longer than it needed to be. And now I'm going to roll this. Again, try to keep it to a rectangle. Did I say that? Yes. Okay, good. And then bring it out this way. And you want it to be about six inches. So let's take a look. Yeah, it's probably a little bit more than six inches, but that's okay. It just means you've got more goodness coming to you. All right, that's done. So I'm just gonna firm up the edges so that I have more of a rectangle because it's going to be easier for me to roll it. I don't know if you can see all this, Anne Marie. You can yes. come up a little closer if you need to. Can you see down in there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now here's when you take all that goodness, that cinnamon and sugar, and you're going to plop it right on here. Now what I do is I like to have lots of goodness right in the center, right? Now you gotta be careful because um, the dough is soft and you don't wanna rip it. So try to be as gentle as possible, but I know it's hard, it's hard. You know, the butter starts to get warm, uh, cold, and then it solidifies. 
and we've got the EAC is actually blowing right now, believe it or not. And I'm going to try to bring this all the way out to the edge. Oh my gosh. Are you going to put nuts in it? I'm glad you asked. So last night I decided I wanted some pecans in there. So I started toasting up my pecans and I went, huh, pecans toasted sounds really good, but what about pecans that are candied? So I candied my pecans. Yummy. I know. I'll add that Sounds to the recipe. Good. So let's do this. And it's so easy. In the pan, some water, some butter, some sugar, and the pecans. And what you could do is toast the pecans a little bit before so that you get that nutty flavor. I'm going to move this over. having a hard time here that but we have a vent right over here so it's hitting here quickly I'm trying to get it all the way to the end it's probably okay because this is really going to melt like crazy and I know it's going to get all the way to the edges but I want these edges to have some and you'll see why let me just scrape this off don't worry folks I haven't touched my face my mouth nothing so out here again trying to get it to the edge as much as possible I'm not too worried about this end because that's the end at the very end part this is the part I was more concerned about for the center my mouth is already watering guys mine and is we, too yours yeah right especially since we tasted the one this morning we already know what it tastes like so now you're gonna make a little, oh wait, we've got those nuts. I was just going to ask. Here's the pecans, guys. These are so good. I know uh, when I make them, it's hard to keep them around. Sure is. Yeah. So I'm just gonna add those in here. Then we'll save some for the tops. Okay, I think that's good. That so you're going to add the how to do the pecans on yes. your recipe? Yes, I will go ahead and do that for you guys. So let me, I think I might have to start a blog as well, so I don't put so much typing in the description area of YouTube. Okay, so look at, it's rolling, rolling, rolling into a delicious cinnamon roll. Again, I know it's not a true cinnamon roll, but it still works, and I can have it with my coffee in the morning. All right, so now what you're going to do is take a brush and those mugs I told you about. You're going to take that butter that's left over, and you're just going to put that all over the mugs. Can you use oil? You may be thinking. Of course you can. Whatever kind of oil you want to use. I like grapeseed oil. I wouldn't use olive oil only because it's such a strong flavor and you don't want it to clash with uh, the cinnamon. And then make sure you get these big cups. But I know when I make my bread pudding, when I was doing it for my accounts, I have two accounts that I did bread pudding. I won't say did, do, because they're gonna come back. And when they do, we're gonna get working. And I do these phenomenal brownies and bread pudding, and boy, I make sure that it has butter. All right, so I'm gonna take that. I don't want too much, I don't want it dripping, because this is just, this is supposed to be a single serve, but I don't know, Anna Marie, don't you think that's enough for two people? Oh, plenty. Yeah, I thought it was a lot. Okay. Get these all done. Now, when you put these in the microwave as well, you only do one at a time. All right, so now what we're gonna do is, let me grab a knife out of here. We are gonna take that, I like to measure out how big it is. So I'm gonna go right about here for halfway mark. And just cut right, ooh, I just cut right through a pecan. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is take a look at your mug. Uh oh, guess what? This one, I didn't roll it up. This one has a little bit extra right here. Oh. I should have rolled it out more. 
You could roll it out more so that you have. Because you're going to take this. Can you see all the little goodness right there? Mm -hmm. And you're just going to drop that inside. And we're going to let this one be a little short just so that we can have that little baby mug. I have one already made just in case. And we'll drop that right in there. Boy, you can't even see that one. And I don't have, do I have any more cinnamon left? Nope. We'll sprinkle something on there. And then you're going to take these. Look at, look at that. Can you see that? Ooh, that looks good. Doesn't it? All that goodness in there. And you're going to put this right inside and just kind of push it so that it'll stand in the middle. Sometimes it falls over. Again, that luscious, look at that spiral. That's a cinnamon roll if I've ever seen one. Again, kind of smush it down in there in the center of your mug. And then here's the key. You're going to put a teaspoon, just before you bake it, you put a teaspoon of water down into the mug. Put that in here. And on this one, oh, oh excuse me, sorry guys. Boy, good thing I had my hair done yesterday. Are you going to ask if I went to the salon? Aren't you going to ask? Did you go to the salon? Yeah, I went to Marion's salon, but I got to tell you the reason why. First, let me make sure I have the right time on here. Do, 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 microwave. Uh, place. Let go. Initiate. Do, 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 two mugs. Can you believe I don't have... What was the time that I actually did? I believe it was one minute. Let me just check really quick. Sorry, guys. That's what happens when you do this like this. Uh, okay, we're going to do one minute. So I'm going to go ahead. I have that in there. And I'm going to hit that one minute mark. Make sure you take a look um, because it, it could be too much of a bake. Uh, oh, I know what it is. It's a minute and 45. But I felt that was too long. So a minute and 25 is good. So we'll let that go to one minute. And then I'll hit an additional 25 seconds. And um, it's going to be luscious. And it's so cool because it's going to rise up. I don't know if you can get a shot. We'll wait till it starts to rise. But I was saying about salon. You know, everyone keeps speaking about small business and the restaurants, uh, all those family-owned restaurants. There are so many. Camplacha, uh, Villa Roma. Um, there's also right here in Whittier. There's so many in Whittier. We just got some Thai food uh, a couple of days ago from Greenleaf Thai amazing they're also family owned I've gone in there and had long conversations with the owner and then my kitchen that I work out of is Canela Bakery in Montebello and they are delicious so they have a combination of things Ooh, it's starting you can see it rising let me get that 25 minutes more in there Ooh, look come come over come close bring it on in just don't look at my messy window See it? Oh, it's starting to puff up. Mm. That's the cinnamon roll. Woo! I'm so excited. So anyway, go to those places. Ganela, they make the best Mexican food ever. Oh my God. What's the favorite one, Anna Marie? Um, Chile Verde. That's right. It's like the best. So, so delicious. And their bolillos are good. Oh yeah, their bolillos are delicious also. So if you need some bolillos, uh, you want some bread, go over there to Ganela. But here's the thing. What you don't hear people speaking about is the salon, the stylist. So my stylist is totally out of work right now because she can't get into her shop and she can't have people come into her home, of course. Six feet distance, can't you see someone standing over here trying to stretch her arm out to get their hair done? So no, that's not going to work. But what she did, she was smart. She put together a packet of stuff and she sent me mine and I'm so glad. It gave me instructions and everything, and I have my due back again. Thank you very much. So don't forget your stylist. Call them up. Ask them. Maybe they'll do the same thing for you and pack you up something. If you need it, give me a call. Send me a direct message, and I will be more than glad to give you or get you in contact with my stylist, Lauren. Uh, Glam Studios is where she's at in Monrovia. Okay. Woohoo! Looky, looky, looky. Can you see that? Ooh, that looks good. Doesn't that look scrumptious? So now you're going to put it in for another 25 seconds? I already did. Oh. That was 25 seconds. It's all done. So what I'm going to do, let me set this one down, put the next one in. I need my teaspoon of water. This one already started to slide over. 
it only hangs for so long in the center. I'm trying to push it back in the center there. Put that in. This one I'll put in for one, whoops. 125, that's why there's flour all over this, guys. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is make a topping. So most places you go to, their topping is a white glaze, right? That glaze is very easy to make. It's just powdered sugar and milk, drop a little vanilla in it, drop cinnamon if you want, and you just swirl that or drizzle that over the cinnamon roll. However, I'm Mama Cheesecake, so I went into my refrigerator because I had made some. I had made some vanilla bean baked whipped cheesecake. So I bake my cheesecake and then I take it out after it's been cooled out and uh, chilled in the refrigerator overnight. Can you see it? And I take it out and I whip it into deliciousness. So I took a nice healthy spoonful and I put that in there. I'm just gonna toss this over to the side. And then, I need a tablespoon. I made a mixture of vanilla, I mean not vanilla, of cream, uh, heavy whipping cream and milk. And I'm gonna put two tablespoons in here. To the cheesecake? To the cheesecake. And then what I'm going to do is actually whip this together. Oops, the next one. Ooh, look at that one. That's a beautiful rise on it. Look at ooh, this. Oh, this one filled the whole mug. Look at that. That looks yummy. Doesn't that look so... And you could see it's all done in that center. Oh, my God. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was hot. Careful. Okay. Yes, thank you. All right, and now the little babies. And I'll show you a better baby one after. And you don't want to put a full teaspoon in there because it's just a little baby one. We'll put that in there. And we're gonna do this one for a minute. Hopefully that won't be too bad. Somehow I think it should be less. But let me get my one that's done. I will show it to you just yet. I'll show it to you in a second. First, I'm gonna finish mixing this up. Can you see it all really good? Now, you know, I mentioned you could put some vanilla. Well, this is a vanilla bean cheesecake, so we didn't need to do anything more. Look at that. Oh, my God. So are you giving us the recipe for that? Well, you could use any type of cheesecake, but here's the cool thing, is I'm working on something that's going to be really awesome. So you could have some Mama Cheesecake to do different things like this with. Uh, that'll be coming out hopefully the 1st of May. So I can tell you kind of how to do it if you have some cheesecake at home, but of course, unfortunately, I'm like passing out my cheesecake recipe, not just yet. <laughs> so now you take this and you just kind of let it, it's kind of dumping, it's not drizzling too good. It probably needs a little more of my mixture. Hold on. Ooh, and I can smell that. Wait, smells good. I almost licked my finger. Did you catch that? I did, but I didn't lick it. The days of COVID. That means the days where you used to do that, you can't do. Now, at home, I would do that. In the kitchen, I wouldn't get caught dead doing that. Gosh, no. I'd get in trouble. But you know, when you're home, you're like, oh, okay, I could do that. Good news is, guys, I'm filing my paperwork to do cottage. And since right now I'm not doing wholesale, I can actually apply for my cottage license. So guess what? When this gets going and I get my approval, I can start doing curbside delivery. You just drive out here to Whittier. Yay. Okay, so I'm gonna put that on here. I'll turn that off right now. Oh my God, this one is so gorgeous. Just kind of trying to get that on there. I like my cinnamon rolls covered. So I'm going to throw some extra on there. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. What do you think? How does it look it looks there? looks good from here. Okay. Let me go close. Yep, come close. I told you I had some extra pecans. We're just gonna throw some right there on top. Oh, that looks good. Woohoo! Look at that. Those are the candy pecans. Yes. An extra one for good luck. 
Where's that one? Here's the little baby one I did earlier. Set that down. Here's the baby one that I just finished. It's really a baby. It's so small. That'll be a good one Anne Marie mentioned for our mom. She'll like that. So I'm going to throw some, well, we'll throw a lot of this on here. She'll like that also. I'll beam that up. We'll be able to put this, okay, and throw some pecans. We'll throw the smaller ones on there for mom. Kind of the dusting of them. Okay, there we go. That's perfect. Isn't that delicious? So this is what you end up with is uh, two and a half mugs of cinnamon roll mugs. Again, it's a cinnamon roll in a mug. Okay, I know, I know, it's not a cinnamon roll. So don't be sending me messages saying, that's not a cinnamon roll. I get it, but it's a great baking hack using a pancake dough. All right. We're going to take a walk out here really quick because I think my sister's arms are ready to fall off and we're going to end this. How long have we been on? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. See, it's already time to go. So we'll just take a quick peek out here. Let me, let me open this up. All right, come on out. Ooh, it's warm out here. So from... Our home, my sister and I, here in Condo in Whittier, we've got some mint, we've got some other stuff growing that way. I've got some jalapenos growing. This is a little baby grapefruit. I've got, uh, got some raspberries. This is blueberries. I'm so excited. Strawberries back here, there's so much growing. Lavender. La oh yeah, we've got our lavender growing there as well. Thank you very much for uh, stopping by and watching. And again, sorry about what happened at three o'clock show. Next Wednesday, we'll have our new box and we'll be able to roll. Okay, see you all then. Bye. Bye. Hit the red button.